Greetings. Welcome to the Society of African Earth Scientists Solar Photovoltaics Energy System Installation. This is a workshop which has been organized to mark the launch of the Patrice Lumumba African Youth Science Program. Uh, because this is a really a demonstration to mark the launch of the program, there's not going to be a full photovoltaics course. It will simply be mainly a demo with the bare bones minimum of theory uh, or, or any formulas or anything like that. So let's look at what we will be dealing with today. Right, so this course, the full course, would consist of five parts. Introduction to electricity, photovoltaic electricity, components of a domestic solar powered system. And it says here, video presentation, installing a solar powered electric system. Instead of the video presentation, hopefully we can make a live presentation because we have the equipment here to demonstrate the installation of a small solar electric system, a 12 volt solar electric system. And then if there is time, we can have a summary of the learning and a follow up with questions. But these five parts uh, represent the full course or the full training. So let's look at the components of a domestic solar powered system. Uh, but of course we should first of all talk about a brief introduction to electricity, defining some of the basic concepts. So the most basic concept that we need to know about is that of electric current. So it says here, we normally describe electricity as the presence or flow of charged particles. From this, it follows that an electric current is the flow of electrons, negatively charged particles, around a closed circuit. When we detect the flow of an electric current, we can measure it. The electric current flows in the opposite direction to the flow of the free electrons. So having appreciated this, we should also appreciate that an electric current is measured, measured in units called amps with symbol A. And the symbol that we usually use to describe electric current is I. In this video, we can see that there is a movement of electrons Let's uh, start the video. Through the wire, which connects the positive and negative terminals of this battery. Now the electrons are represented by the black arrows. They represent the free electrons, the flow of free electrons. And the red arrow represents the in electric current. So the free electrons are distinguished from the electric current, but for the electric current to exist, you must have a flow of free electrons. So this is how an electric current flows. It flows from the positive terminal of the battery to the negative terminal of the battery. Whereas the free flow of electrons move from the negative to the positive. We also need to look at what we call potential difference or electric potential. Very many of us are familiar with the 1.5 volt battery. And we know that 
this potential difference is the, the difference in potential between the positive and the negative terminals of the battery, which are the top and the bottom, respectively, uh, you know, terminals of the battery. So this electric potential can also be thought of as well as a force, a force which drives electric current through the wire. So the, uh, now that we've seen current, which is measured in amps, we've looked at electric uh, potential, which is actually measured in volts. Uh, and now we want to look at power. So power measures the rate at which electrical energy is converted into the kind of work that we need to be done. So it could be running an electric drill or a hairdryer or boiling a kettle or whatever. This is what we term as work and it's measured in watts, symbol W. We don't really need to take note of anything else on this particular page. Uh, we move on to the next page. We want to find the relationship for power because we've learned about power. We've learned about current and we've also learned about voltage. So if we look at the second formula here, P is equal to V times I, this is actually saying power is equal to voltage multiplied by current. So this is a, an important relationship for us when we're designing our solar electric system and also when we're operating and maintaining our solar electric system with practice we'll be able to understand more and more deeply why this formula is so useful but power as we've said p is measured in watts voltage or potential difference is uh, measured in volts uh, and i which is current is measured in amps there are other interesting properties like resistance and so on, but we would cover that in a full course. So the science behind photovoltaic energy, we will not deal with. We would deal with that in a full course, but we would deal with part three, components in a solar electric system. And before today, many of you will have been sent out a little exercise that had to be completed, which was to match the household appliance to its correct output in watts. And we can see here, this is what people were sent. Um, we can see here some of these are obviously wrong. Uh, at least one is wrong. You've got a light bulb here with massive wattage, 400 to 700 watts. Of course, that seems ridiculous, especially in this modern day and age. We have light bulbs which can be as low as three watts or so. And then, so what would be the most... Um, high energy using application. It would be the application which required the most heat or output the most heat. So out of that list, you would obviously say that a cooker would output the most heat. So thinking in that direction, look at the highest wattage. The highest wattage we can see is 10,000 watts. So the cooker we would estimate must be 
a 10,000 watt output appliance? Anyway, we've got the correct answers. And we can see here that in order of increasing power consumption, we have the light bulb, 3 to 40 watts, mobile phone, 10 watts, ceiling fan, 70 to 80 watts, desk fan, 40 to 45 watts, TV, 50 to 120 watts, fridge, 400 to 700 watts, iron, 1,000 to 1,500 watts, air conditioning, 2,500 watts, and electric cooker, 10,000 watts. So basically, we can see here that in designing our solar electric system, we need to make a list like this of all the household appliances that we believe we're going to use with their power output and add up the wattage of all of these items to find out what will be the power requirement for our uh, dwelling. So looking from this list, you could tell that the kind of power output that might power a house could be something in the region of 10,000 to 15,000 kilowatts. Sorry, 10,000 to 15,000 watts. In other words, about 15 kilowatts. So this type of figure will be very important when we want to choose what level of equipment we want to use for our solar electric system. It tells us that if we're going to have a power inverter, that is um, equipment that converts our direct current or direct um, uh, you know, current drawn from uh, sun energy from the solar panels into alternating current, which is for household appliances, we're going to have to use something in the region of a 15 kilowatt uh, inverter. Uh, we're going to obviously use a much smaller inverter today in our demonstration, but the principles applied will be the same. So we could go ahead and look at these different components of the electric system. So the different components of the solar electric system include the solar panels and the number and uh, specification of solar panels that you use will all be dictated by the needs that you identify through designing your solar electric system. You'll also need uh, batteries. And the interesting thing about solar panels and batteries is their arrangement. Solar panels and batteries can be arranged in two ways, which are termed as parallel and series. So we shall see what this means very shortly. Uh, then usually you would also have a fuse to protect your equipment, like your charge controller. But today in our demonstration, uh, because it's only a demo, we won't be installing a fuse. But if you want to do that uh, for real in uh, making your household uh, installation, you definitely have to put in a fuse to protect your equipment. Then there's the solar charge controller. This ensures that the battery doesn't get undercharged or overcharged. This uh, basically maintains the stability of the solar electric system. And then there's the pure wave, pure sine wave power inverter. A power inverter converts the electricity from direct current to alternating current, which can be used in household appliances. And uh, it's pure sine wave because uh, it makes, uh, basically surges in, uh, you know, current, um, less harmful to 
uh, sensitive equipment like computers, laptops, and so on. So those are the main components of the solar electric system. So at this point, we can, in our demonstration, have a look at a 12 volt system and identify all of these components in a 12 volt solar electric system. So at this point, let's stop the share for a moment. So we're able to demonstrate uh, practically uh, the installation of all the components that make up a solar electric system. So we'll start off with the solar panels. So here you see that we have um, a pair of two 12 volt solar panels. Each of them is 20 watts. So let me rearrange them as they catch the sunlight from the window. And if we look at the wiring at the back, it looks very complicated, but it, it's actually very simple. Let me demonstrate. So this wire is the negative terminal of the overall panel arrangement. And this wire is the positive terminal of the overall panel arrangement. And the negative terminal must go to the negative terminal of the battery, which is here. And the positive terminal wiring must go to the positive terminal of the battery, which is here. Right, so far that's straightforward. Now, the, the, the participant will always know that, uh, of course, that these are two separate solar panels and they are connected in parallel. They can be connected in a series of arrangement or a parallel arrangement, but in this case, they are connected in parallel. That is the positive terminal of one solar panel is connected to the positive terminal of the other, and the negative terminal of uh, the solar panel is connected to the negative terminal of the other. That's what we call a parallel connection. And parallel connections do not increase voltage. So two 12 volt solar panels connected in parallel will give you a 12 volt combined arrangement. So that deals with the solar panels. The batteries uh, can also be arranged in series or parallel in a similar fashion. Here we've got two 12 volt batteries and we want to connect them in parallel because uh, in parallel there will not be an increase in voltage. We will maintain the 12 volt arrangement. Remember, we are setting up a 12 volt solar electric system. So to connect them in parallel, we must connect uh, and it should have been um, probably disconnected these earlier to make this demonstration a bit more meaningful. And then you'll see how the whole thing is connected up. Yeah, so to connect these two batteries in parallel, we must connect the positive, which is the red terminal, to the positive terminal of the other battery, like that. Or in some fashion, I will improve this as, you, as, we'll, as we'll see as we go along. And then that's a temporary arrangement. And then the negative, which is the black terminal, to the negative terminal of the other battery. 
So this is just a temporary connection for the moment. So these two batteries are now connected in parallel. Okay. So that deals with the connection for the solar panels and the batteries. The next component we're going to be looking at is the solar power inverter. And um, I suppose what I should have explained about the batteries before we move to the, ne the next component is that the batteries store the energy collected from the sun by the solar panels. So the batteries store that power. And that power is converted from direct current from the sun to alternating current, which is usable by household appliances by a piece of equipment which we call the power inverter. So this is a power inverter. It's a 300 watt power inverter, so it's quite small. But the principle of installation is the same, whether we're talking about 300 watt, 10,000 watts, 15,000 watts, whatever, the principle is the same. And this is a 12 volt power inverter in keeping with our 12 volt solar power system setup. And here we see that it has a plus terminal, which is in red, and a negative terminal, which is in black. And we have to connect the plus terminal to the plus terminal of the battery and the negative terminal to the negative terminal of the battery. We have to ensure that we never ever get this polarity wrong because that will destroy the equipment and uh, invalidate your ability to get a refund. So we connect the plus terminal, the positive terminal of the battery, and the negative to the negative terminal. So that's a 300 watt inverter. Of course, inverters can vary in size. You can get very large inverters. Uh, here it shows one as large as 550 kilowatts. So this inverter here is 0 0.3 kilowatts. Here you see one that's uh, 550 kilowatts, another one that's 5 kilowatts, another that's 50 kilowatts. So for a household uh, to be sufficient for your household needs, you might need 10 to 15 kilowatts. But that gives you an idea of the sizes of inverters. So last but not least, we look at the charge controller. This one has already been connected. As you can see, it's got four wires. The charge controller is connected to both the batteries and the solar panels. Uh, so the positive and negative uh, terminals on the charge controller go to the positive and negative terminals of the batteries and the um, solar panels. The charge controller has the function of ensuring that the batteries do not get overcharged or discharged. Uh, so it's really the hub of the, um, the control hub of the solar electric system. So this charge controller you can see is reading 12.4 volts. And you can see from the icon that the battery is charging, the solar panel is um, up. The solar panels are connected and working. Um, if one of these wasn't connected, the icons wouldn't appear. You can see that the battery is not fully charged. 
Uh, from the icon, you can see it's not a complete full battery. Uh, if we get 12.7, 12.8 volts, then the battery should be fully charged. At the moment, you can see it's 12.4, but it's sufficient for us to still run the system. Um, everything is connected, so we can try and test it now. So now we've connected the uh, charge controller. For this demo, we have not installed a fuse, which we normally should install between the positive terminal of the battery and the positive terminal of the charge controller. So, so we should have a, uh, you know, a, a fuse there and if we look at the specification for the charge controller, we might be able to see that the specification is a maximum of 20 amps current. So that means that we should put in a fuse, a 20 amp fuse, in order to protect our charge controller. That just ensures that if there's a surge of current, it does not damage your equipment. So as a precaution, you put a fuse between the positive terminal of the battery and the charge controller. So we're ready now to test the system. If we look at the power inverter, we can see that it has a plug which we can use to take power to household items. If we turn on the power inverter now, if the system is correctly set up, we should have a green light and no further peeps. But if there's a fault in the system, you will get repeated beeps. And um, so let's see what happens. So as you can see that we've got, we've got a green light, everything's working fine and um, there's no beeps so it means the system is correctly set up we can go ahead and test our appliance so we've got a a clamp light here of some form and it's got a bulb inside it which is six watts so this is a six watt bowl it's highly recommended that you get low wattage light bulbs these days they can get low wattage light bulbs down to three watts or so uh, this means that it doesn't tax the energy on your system it doesn't um, draw too much energy from the system and you have energy available for your laptop and other things that you want to use the power for so this is six watts. This clamp light doesn't have a switch, so if we plug it straight in, it should come on. So what I'll do is I'll switch off the inverter for now. I'll plug in the light. Will it come on? And the light comes on. Yeah. So that completes the demonstration of the components of a 12 volt solar electric system. Okay, so we've managed to demonstrate the different components that make up a solar electric system. What we're going to do now is to just tie up the demonstration and workshop by just talking about some of the things that we've had to omit due to lack of time. Um, 
this has been a bare bones demonstration, leaving out most of the theory on electricity, uh, solar photovoltaic uh, energy. And uh, also there's some additional things that uh, the participants will have to know in order to safely install a solar electric system. We didn't cover items like positioning of the solar panels. And as a rule of thumb, you need to be able to have roof space that will allow you to position the solar panels to catch both the rising sun and the setting sun. Uh, in some cases, you will be limited by uh, roof space. It may be that you're only able to place panels on one side of uh, the dwelling to catch sun that is uh, rising and the other side of the dwelling does not catch you know setting sunshine in cases like this you can design your system accordingly you can perhaps try and uh, include a large number of panels to catch as much power as you can in the, the the first part of the day and enough storage capacity to store enough power so that this power can be used later on in the day so that's one option so you can uh you must design your system according to your limitations wherever you're located and obviously the placement of solar panels is a major consideration also, we did not cover wiring uh, in our design due to lack of time. Generally speaking, um, as we used in our demo, a four millimeter diameter wire is uh, quite reasonably safe wiring for household purposes. Uh, however, there is a risk of fire sometimes if wiring is designed too thin to carry the current uh you know that is going to be used for the system so too much current load in too thin a wire is a fire risk so this is the reason why you need to be able to design your wire thickness but generally four millimeter uh, millimeter wire is uh quite okay for a household installation and then lastly, we close the demonstration with a quick review of the examples of parallel and series connections in solar panels and batteries. We spoke about this earlier. Uh, this is crucial in enabling us to set up our solar panel and uh, battery arrays. The principles of parallel and series connections are exactly the same, both for solar panels and for batteries. Namely, we can see that these are two solar panels in a series connection because the positive terminal of one panel is connected to the negative terminal of the other. Now, when you connect two components in series, this increases the voltage. So two solar panels connected in series will give an overall uh, array value of 24 volts so basically when you connect in series it adds up the uh, voltage but when you connect in parallel it does not increase the, the, the voltage so three solar panels connected in series will give us a 36 volt array because it's 12 plus 12 plus 12 and again series connection is positive to negative positive to negative now when we come to connect solar panels in parallel we do not get an increase in voltage and as we saw the solar panels that were in our demonstration were two 12 volt solar panels that were connected in parallel. So that means the positive terminal of one panel 
was connected to the positive of the other, the negative of one to the negative of the other. And the solar uh, parallel array for solar panels does not increase the voltage. So the overall value of this array, when you connect two panels together, is still 12 volts. If you add four panels together, it's still 12 volts. 40 or 400, it's 12 volts. So that basically shows you that um, connecting panels in parallel does not increase the voltage, whereas in series it does. So we've looked at panels, batteries follow the same exact procedure. Uh, if you want to connect two batteries in series, two 12 volt batteries in series will give a 24 volt battery array. Four 12 volt batteries in series, that is positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative connections, will give a 48 volt system. And then when we come to parallel, the uh, parallel connections do not increase the voltage. So two batteries connected in parallel or four batteries connected in parallel, that is positive to positive, negative to negative, will give you a 12 volt array. So that really covers what we can reasonably cover in a demonstration of this type. And I hope that this has been useful. And what we can say is uh, thank everybody for participating and uh, paying attention. Uh, Society of African Earth Scientists will be holding ongoing future renewable energy workshops in solar uh, for the meantime. We may also graduate to look at uh, wind energy in future. And we can say that if people would like notes to follow up on this training in solar electric installation, this can be downloaded from our web address or blog at saescientists.blogspot.com. So if you go to that web or blog address and you search for workshops tab on the site, you'll be able to download a full set of notes relevant to this installation uh, demonstration. So thank you for your uh, attention and good day.